Hey everybody, it's Quicken and welcome back to Five Fact Friday. So, uh, yeah, I have blonde hair right now. Um, it's like really blonde. I don't know if this lighting is really doing it justice. I'm sure that isn't helping anybody. But, yeah, I have blonde hair right now. Uh, I am going to be a model at a Pulp Riot color class that is coming to Philadelphia. If you guys remember, Pulp Riot was the color that my hair was over the summer. So that's going to be on Sunday. So the hairstylist who has picked me as their model um, prepped me today by uh, using color remover to get the A to SM out of my hair. And I also had a lot of green staining you guys might remember and I think a lot of that green like we tried to get it out I think it's really here to stay um I've kind of been like rocking this blonde all day and really all I had to do was go downtown today and get my hair done and then come back um and then I also got a haircut by a different stylist so that's why I'm blonde um so it's only temporary I will by Sunday, I'll be at the Pulp Riot class, and with their like permission, I'm going to vlog like my experience as a Pulp Riot color model. The class is like four hours. They said they were gonna feed us, so um, I'm pretty excited for that. Hopefully, you know they let me vlog. I really want to, but they also have like a pretty strong social media presence, so I'm. I have a feeling that there might be a dialogue in the beginning where they're like, save all of your social media-ing until the end. And they also hired, um, like, a photographer to be there. So I don't know. I'm just gonna vlog unless someone tells me to stop. So you can look forward to that. And it's a little bit more of an explanation on why I'm blonde. I've never been blonde before except for, like, if it was to transition between colors, so I've never like been blonde really like on purpose before, like definitely not done in a salon blonde ever, but I make people blonde every single day, so it felt familiar. Um, but I'm gonna jump into Five Pack Friday. So our next question, um, hey Quicken, since becoming more heavily tattooed, I almost have a full sleeve. I really started straying away from wearing brightly colored clothes or even things with patterns because I feel like it looks strange with my tattoos, even though I don't have any color. Do you experience this feeling? What types of clothing do you think are most flattering to avoid competing with your tattoos? So this is something I'm pretty like fully aware of, um, but with getting more tattoos in my life, like. I've always been like a basics girl and I from like pretty early on I don't know if it was because I couldn't afford it or because I didn't really ever work in a crowd of kids who were uh, like this but I've never been like a big name brand person so I've always kind of stuck to like plain simple clothing especially clothing that doesn't have brand names on it or that doesn't have like emblems and stuff and I know I'm wearing my like rose tattoo shirt right now but for me like I did like wearing like prints and stuff I did like wearing like floral um I still wear like plaid I wear flannel like every day I just took my plaid off because I've worn it all week um so I do really like plaids Floral is kind of hard, especially when I worked at the coffee shop. I had a couple floral tops I really liked, and it was weird. I always got like the same like three or four comments like, oh, you did you match your shirt to your tattoos? And I would be like, what the fuck? This shirt's from Forever 21, are you crazy? I wouldn't really say that. I would just be like, yeah. <laughs> or some people would be like, oh, I didn't even think you had a shirt on because of your tattoos. And I was like, yeah, I'm here topless. Yeah. No, I'm not that big of a prick. I just wouldn't say anything. Um, so florals were kind of hard because that definitely happened a lot, but my tattoos are full color. So if I did wear like a loud floral shirt, um, I think it did kind of like 
blend, not really, but I think it would catch people's attention in a way that was like kind of loud and bothersome to me. So I do tend to wear like a lot of plain stuff or like um, everyday patterns like the plaids, the checkers, stuff like that. Um, and if I'm ever going to wear like a floral or something, I have like a green um, flannel that I wear that is like has flower print on it. Um, usually I'll wear that all the way long sleeve or I'll wear it as layers. So that's kind of hard, especially like I feel like floral was huge like two years ago maybe. I know when I worked at the streetwear store like dudes wearing floral was like crazy hip hop like dudes are wearing floral. That's kind of died down but I am kind of conscious of that when I am like styling my outfits but at the same time with me it comes very easily because I've always been like basics plain kind of clothing no brands just like really neutral color palette a lot of earth tones and I think just naturally those go with my tattoos maybe not even purposefully but that's always been my style and then the tattoos are kind of accents to that um so I kind of let them speak for themselves especially if I'm just wearing a plain white t-shirt I'm like well I got all the tattoos and that's kind of how I feel that's how I style a lot of my stuff um and I wear like a lot of solids like right now I'm wearing all black <laughs> um and then I have like um let's see like these socks and then what the fuck and that's how I dress uh <clears throat> I do like wearing pastels though and that's sometimes hard with the tattoos because my tattoos are more like jewel tone kind of darker but I don't, I don't think about it too hard just because everything kind of goes together. But yeah, there are clashes with some things, most definitely. But I feel like those are just like really loud shirts to begin with. And I was never that like loud chick. So I got this question on Twitter. I really loved it. Do you think being punk, do you think being in the punk scene affected your life in the long run? Um, if so, how? And I... I thank and attribute punk to a lot of stuff and you might hear me talk about it on here a lot but if you know me at all in real life um, punk is kind of the like ethical ground that I stand on in my everyday life and it really helps me um, kind of it definitely has helped me like build the person I am today and it's funny because the punk kids that I grew up with when they came into my life, I needed them so badly. I needed punk more than anything. And I thank punk so much. And the punk kids who were in my life um, showed me something else. And they showed me a lifestyle. And they showed me, like, a, a, a thinking, uh, like, an ethical kind of thinking that I had never experienced before. And not to say that I was like in a group of posi punks that I wasn't. They would go to parties and talk shit and they would steal. And we would like beg for change and stuff like that. Like I think that we were kind of like, um, kind of like, like hoodlum punks. Like definitely that like we weren't vegetarian, vegan. We weren't straight edge. We didn't kind of have like those ethical causes. But we were a support group for each other for kids who didn't belong. Didn't belong in our families, didn't belong in our schools, didn't belong in our like economic situation. A lot of things like that and that was a support and that was kind of like a misfits kind of group. So the punk kids that I used to hang out with um, kind of phased me out of their group and that was really hard but when I went into high school, I had all of the tools of like being a punk kid and I understood what it was like to feel ostracized but protected at the same time within that like social group. So I went into high school with those tools. You know, I went into high school with a shaved head and red hair and I worked at McDonald's and that didn't bother me. 
not like middle school where I felt like I stuck out and I was alone and I was a loser and I was poor and I was ugly and I thought about that constantly because I felt like when you stick out you constantly wonder why and then you obsess about it and then you're like well it has to be this reason and it has to be this reason and it has to be my nose and it has to be my shoes and it has to be my parents so developing an understanding and an acceptance of standing out and finding pride in it and feeling good about it those tools have been with me my entire life and they're with me now and now i attribute punk to a lot of stuff like i attribute it to loyalty and i attribute it to my code of ethics all the time and i attribute it to standing up for people and standing up for what i believe in and practicing a dialogue that you know i don't flip over a table but if someone uses a language I don't like, I'm like, yeah, that's not cool. And I don't have a problem being like, you shouldn't say that. Or, you know, you should practice taking that out of your dialogue. And I don't have a problem with that at all. I really don't. And I know that that comes from punk. And although like my time being like, oi punk was so short lived, I feel like I've stayed that way. And people will call it like post-punk, you know, on my Tumblr a long time ago, I wasn't shy about calling it that. Now I just like call it punk and I call my lifestyle that. And that's exactly what it is. And I think all the integrity I have and that I've developed is from living an alternative lifestyle. And I definitely attribute that to being punk and growing up punk. And <laughs> it's funny, like, if you saw my Christmas post, I got my brother um, a hoodie for Christmas because he's, like, me growing up and doesn't want to wear a jacket to school. So I got him one of the hoodies that's, like, lined on the inside. And he likes this game, Gears of War. So I went to look for shirts for him. And I don't think he can wear some of those shirts to school because I think it's, like, a, a violent video game. I don't know. I've never played it. I don't even know what console it's for. I don't know. And all the, sh he's like small, so all the shirts were like XL. So I got him a large shirt, cut it up, and I sewed it on the back of the hoodie. And I was kind of just like, please let the punks adapt, adopt my brother. Please save him. Please be punk. I will take you to any Dead Kennedys cover show you want. Um, that's just me. Like, I, I don't want to be like, punk saved my life. But being punk, being alternative, whatever it is, like, if you were in the goth scene, like, if you were in any sort of scene that protected you from being, like, while you were different, uh, I mean, blessed. I loved it. So I don't know. I love punk. I, I think punk's everything to me. And I attribute it so much of my personal development and my personal acceptance to being punk. And also Tumblr. Um... Hey Quicken, lately I've been watching a ton of your Five Back Fridays and Tattoo Talk Tuesday videos again, and I had one question, and it was this. Have you ever had an argument about a tattoo with a partner? One of my tattoos caused a huge argument between me and my boyfriend when I first told him I was getting it. He called it tacky, and he called it stupid. It was something I really wanted, and I went ahead with it anyway. Everything's cool now. I was just curious to see if you've ever been in a similar situation. Oh my god, it's so weird that I'm blonde. So, it's kind of hard in my current life, you know, um, I don't involve my uh, boyfriend in any of my tattoo planning, and it's a little foreign because I don't talk to him about it at all. I don't invite him to my appointments. Um, sometimes I'll tell him I'm going, but there are some times when he'll call me and he'll be like, hey, what are you up to? And I'm like, I'm in New York. So, and that kind of happens often. So he's really at arm's length about everything and so much so that like while I was healing my back tattoo I felt like he was touching it and I was like, dude, the back tattoo I just got for six months? So um, for me like my tattooing is like a really personal thing and I definitely don't involve him with it at all and I think if I got a tattoo he didn't like I would definitely just tell him to get fucked because it's has nothing to do with him it really doesn't and it's something that 
I entered our relationship already really established in doing. And I know that can be completely different, especially if you are even just a couple years younger than me. Um, and that's why I wanted to share, like, my ex-boyfriend and I, we did plan a lot of our tattoos together because we would go together. So that was a little different. Like, him and I were both very involved in the planning because you're sitting next to somebody, you're having a conversation with them about the tattoo they're about to get. So you offer critique or experience or yeah that sounds good so i think it would be harder if in my previous life we had conflict about tattoos that we were getting but we were also a lot younger and really eager to get tattoos like by any means necessary and we would tease each other about our own tattoos but it was always like very innocent and fun and more like um like, oh, I, I, I hate that tattoo, I wish I didn't get it. And I'd be like, yeah. Or late at night, we would just be like, what if we'd never got any of these tattoos or stupid piercings? And I would just be like, yeah, I wish. But in my current life, and I pass this advice on to you, you know, you have to look out for yourself and you have to do what's right by you. And if you are, talking about ideas like if I was talking about ideas with John and he was like that's stupid and I was sharing something personal that like I love that tattoo it was personal to me it was an idea I had and I enjoyed and I told him and he was like that's stupid that's uh tacky first of all I'd be like you got a lot of fucking nerve and second you know that's really discouraging and I feel like if you compared it to something else it might be a little more obvious like I think the first thing people are always like you know plastic surgery and I've heard John say like you better not get lip injections they look stupid and I'm always just like really defensive I'm like if I woke up one day and wanted them you better fucking believe I'd have them and if you think they look stupid and I look at myself in the mirror and I have them and I feel better and I feel like I look better and I can walk outside and feel proud to be me, then you would rather me live in a body that I don't feel comfortable in. So I'm not saying it's that extreme. I'm really not. But I just think, and I said this on my Tumblr, you know, you hear all the dialogue, you hear the people who are like, you look so beautiful without makeup, you don't have to wear makeup, or I want a girl with natural beauty, and I want this and that. And, and honestly, like, I mean, I'm older, I'm 26, been there, done that, but I just want to be with somebody at this point who doesn't put my physical self and my physical appearance at, like, the top of their priority list. You know, I want to be with somebody who is accepting of me, you know, God forbid thinks I'm funny, you know, is proud or respects my accomplishments and stuff like that. And yeah, like my tattoos are my accomplishments, but I just feel like in my life, there's so much stuff I've overcome and so much acceptance I've built and I feel like I have a strong personality and stuff. You know, if anything ever happened in my current situation, I would look for somebody who, you know, is accepting of my tattoos, because whatever the fuck society thinks of tattoos, whatever, but I just would rather be with somebody who, like, me being beautiful, like, isn't a big deal. Like, isn't something that they are super drawn into. And I'm, like, holding Ethan. So... I don't know, it's funny, um, I was talking to one of the stylists, and she's like, you know, I gave up, I made a Tinder. And I was like, yeah, you know, there's nothing wrong with Tinder, nothing wrong with OkCupid, whatever. And she was like, not even OkCupid, because of the profile. Like, I don't, the whole written out profile thing, like, Tinder, they just look at your picture. And I was like, you better snap a good picture, or they're gonna scroll right past you and never give you a chance. And... Hey, you know, I would rather get scrolled past, honestly, any single day of the week, because I would rather just be with somebody who thinks I'm a good writer, thinks I'm a good person, and, 
you know, if I had a tattoo idea and John was like, that's fucking stupid, I would just be like, hey man, I don't like your boots, but does it mean that I have a problem with you? So, I don't know. That would kind of just be a red flag to me. And it's something you would have to take in jest because you couldn't compare it to be, to be like, I hate when you wear that red hoodie. It's like, deciding to get a tattoo is a huge commitment and deciding to be a tattooed person is a commitment separate from that because you carry you carry everything with you and you carry being tattooed with you so i just think that like i know you guys want to see him i don't know i just think it's a huge commitment and it would totally fucking bum me out unless it was like a, a i i mean don't go in the comments and be like, well, what if she wanted a tattoo of a dick? Like, I don't think she did. I mean, if she did, whatever, like, maybe that's a little different, but I'm just saying. That's how I feel if it was me. And I don't want a tattoo of a dick, so that's how I would answer if it was my situation. So I'm going to finish up the episode with this. And did anything other than being able to be tattooed lead you to cosmetology? And that didn't lead me to cosmetology at all and I'm hoping that there's a there's not a five fact Friday where I was like I'm so stoked that I can be tattooed in beauty school um because like that's true but I um I wanted to start beauty school because I wanted to learn how to do something with my hands and it's funny because before beauty school uh, I really wanted to be a barista but no one will hire you as barista without experience. And I was like, damn, it's so coveted to like have this skill set of being able to make latte and stuff like that. And I had already had like my surf save. I already worked in a kitchen for seven years. I had already been a manager. I was like, why isn't that good enough? Like, what the fuck's the big deal? So when a coffee shop finally hired me and trained me from scratch I was like oh my god I just unlocked this potential and it's so funny because on tumblr after that so many people would message me and be like how did you get your coffee shop job and I was like oh my god like we're out here trying to get jobs um and with that I was like it's so important to be able to do something with your hands because like you guys know, I, I said it, I guess, in this episode, like, I really wanted to be a writer, and I really just wanted to write, and I wanted people to read what I had to say, and I was like, I'm just gonna be a writer, and I became more and more discouraged about that, because I was like, anyone can sit down and write something, and have their thing just as likely to be read as me. So, it's hard to get yourself out of that rut, I love you, and... All that stuff totally so I wanted to go to beauty school to learn how to do something with my hands you know grew up punk we were doing our own hair we were coloring it and dyeing it and cutting it all that stuff styling it so I was really familiar with doing my hair and my own hair you know I had been my grandma had been cutting my bangs for years I used to just ask my ex to cut my hair with just scissors from our house and I was really familiar with all of that but I was really unfamiliar with the concept of paying for any of that. Look at these crazy feet! They're crazy feet! So going to beauty school, I was like, oh my god, people have paid $12? <laughs> now I'm an apprentice at an upscale salon where I'm like, people would pay $200? <laughs> um, I love you like in my armpit for safety so being tattooed you know was kind of a perk and who knows if punk doing punk hair getting tattooed like if they're all connected but I had met John and he's a carpenter like a trade carpenter and when I had met him you know I was just like um doing art like kind of on the side like paying no money I was doing like Craigslist odd jobs and stuff and I had just got the job like as a barista like a little bit after I met him so it was really cool to see somebody who actually had their trade 
successful and work out for them. And it's funny because I lived in the punk house with all of these academic people, um, writers, people from Harvard, you know, people getting their master's, their doctorate. And all of them, you know, I, I know for a fact that they're all, not for a fact, but in my heart, I know that they're successful people and they're doing what makes them happy. But then I met John who had found success at such a young age dropping out of school like that seemed like such a crazy thing to me but it was cool that he had a trade and he could create stuff and he could fix a car and he was a bike mechanic and now he builds houses and now he's building our house and I was like that's crazy and with you know cosmetology with getting your hair license your cosmetology license so much more is in that like our salon um put out an ad for another assistant and I read the ad and it said like you know all the requirements and it also said like fashion forward and unique and stuff like that and I was like you get to express so much of yourself in the beauty industry and that was really important to me because you know when I worked at the coffee shop job I had to take out all my piercings and I had to dye my hair um, brown and when you jump into something like that, that suppresses your self-expression, you're going to be unsatisfied. And not to say I didn't love that job, I really did, and I needed it when it became an opportunity to me, it saved my life, I'm not gonna lie, without it, everything would be fucked. But being able to, uh, you know, enter a career that relies so much on self-expression as someone who is completely obsessed with themselves, it really worked out. And it's cool to be able to have a trade. You know, I go home and my grandma's like, can you trim up my hair a little bit around my ears? And I'm like, fuck yeah I am. I'm about to do it. I'd love to do it. I'm gonna touch that lady's head. And it feels really good. So I'm gonna end Five Fact Friday on that note. I love you guys so much. I have a hair tutorial video coming out. I tried to finish editing it last night and then John came home after he had a few beers and it was hard to concentrate. So that video is going to come out. I don't look like that anymore. But it's a good video and it's a hairstyle I love so check that out. It's going to be out tomorrow. I love you guys. Until next time, you can always leave your questions down below and give this video a thumbs up. I love you. Bye.